Hi, I'm Ben Wigley. I'm an independent filmmaker from Nottingham in the UK. And I'm here to tell you about my latest project, about the greatest living fantasy coffin maker in the whole world, Pa Joe. Plenty, 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 plenty coffees. <laughs> in thousands, thousands, thousands. Yeah. The coffins that he makes are incredibly beautiful objects. But despite this, his business has fallen on seriously hard times and now run the risk of being buried like the thousands of beautiful coffins he's made that now lay deep underground. In Ghana, the funeral trade is booming, but Pajo is no longer part of it. In 2008, he was forced out of his central workshop and has since been trying to make ends meet from his dusty roadside storage hut two hours away from the city centre. I've been to Ghana four times now, and Pajo's been to the UK in a bid to try and raise his profile to earn the cash in order to rescue his business and leave a legacy for his apprentice and his son Jacob. Look the people we come in just to see the lion. We see the Pajo and his son Jacob. So I'm very happy today, I'm very happy. We are trying to raise 20,000 pounds so that we can travel back to Ghana and see where Pajo is now and find the ending to our film. Specifically, your money, whether it's one pound or 1,000 pounds, will go towards flights, food, accommodation for crew, insurance, equipment hire, and give me a great head start in the edit when I get back, taking this film one step closer to our cinema audience. Thanks a lot for listening, and please share this with everyone you know. The things are just completely random. E.T., uh, a car, something to wash your pots with, a football that was not flat when it arrived, uh, a torso, that was interesting when the postman arrived with that one, it was like, um, where to put my hands? There's definitely a spontaneity there. Whoever it is finds something and just thinks, I'll send that to Paul. the early 80s, I was on a train going to Nottingham. I was daydreaming and looking out the window. I was with an American guy, and he said, oh, you're looking so intensely out of the window, what are you looking for? And I said, oh, I'm looking for rabbits. If I see a rabbit, it's really good luck for my next fashion show, and it'll be very successful. And a week later, this papier-mâché rabbit arrived, and then he must have told somebody who told somebody. Now we literally get dozens and dozens of rabbits arrive constantly, so I have to be a bit careful what I say now. The amazing thing about the things that were sent, A, is that they're completely random, B, is that there's no message who they come from, and then the absolute key point is that they never ever are in a box. So they always come as objects with stamps on them and the address written actually on the item. What amazes everybody, including me, is um, how they ever get here. Who 
whoever's sending them really thinks carefully about the colour of the stamps. It might be water related, like a surfboard, and then the stamps are surf related. Sometimes I'm tempted to use the things. There was a sledge arrived, and I think, oh, I could use that, but I, was, I thought, it's a shame to spoil it, you know, because it's got all the stamps and everything written on it. These are some of the latest objects that arrived. Bird box, which happens to be a galleon as well. These rather nice um, Roy Rogers stamps. Uh, what I love about this is that they're water skis, but there's not a pair. It's just a water ski and a water ski. The joy of these things is that they're not particularly about uh, special design. They're just things. Objects live too. They too travel like hard souls, seeking the love of others and a place called home. Solid explorers reshape matter. We are all of the earth and we shall all return. We shall all melt into the night. For many years, I've been just collecting things that inspire me in some way or another. And then when I had my first little shop, which was literally about three metres square, it was really tiny, with no windows, um, the objects then became a really nice thing for, for when people came in and they were quite shy and there was, you're suddenly very confronted with the, me the manager, the owner or whatever. So the, the fact that I could go, oh, have you seen this? It's so scary, ah, or something. It was a real icebreaker. And, and so maybe the objects were a, a, a useful tool for me to make people feel more comfortable and more relaxed. This is a joyous thing that somebody sent me last week, which is um, my room, where, the room where you're standing, in every detail. It's amazing, they've got the bicycle, the television, the bunny rabbit that's over there. This came from Poland recently, and it's just it's a very nice letter, which I'm not showing you because it's too embarrassing, but it says nice things, isn't it? <laughs> I've always had this reputation for being interested in toys, objects, beautiful things, kitsch things. And uh, what I do is the things I collect, I actually use in my work, abstracting it a bit. So, you know, you start with one thing and then it goes to another. This madness is sweet. It creates beauty in the Maya, ice in the fire, niceness in inner hemispheres fierce pleasures of the mad that keeps us sane with glowing music. This process never slumbers. This worldview never sleeps. It creates continually. And whosoever shall paint with this endless brush shall be framed in a world of their own. This madness is sweet. If you look through my old notebooks, it says things like butterfly wings, you know, and to me that means something. Butterfly wings would mean iridescent colours, where you put two colours together that hurt your eyes, like an orange and red or a turquoise and a blue. So that would probably end up being a piece of knitwear or something. It's literally just using your sort of eyes and using your imagination to, to develop um, ideas, really. What's so amazing about this stuff I get sent is it's like it's completely unsung hero. It's just somebody who's doing something which is a massively creative, but um, nobody knows about it. I think the object taken on this sort of uh, iconic, sort of artistic uh, presence, you know, even though they are still a traffic cone. We find art in the gutter and the orbits of moons. We find mighty friends in fragile leaves. In life we make, in death we make. 
tempo when we lie decomposing we be still composing I think it is actually more art than masses of art that's out there. I'm not really sure what it is, to be honest, <laughs> but uh, somebody knows. It's just a joy to have mystery. Thank goodness for that, I'd say. Hi, I'm Ben Wigley. I'm an independent filmmaker from Nottingham and I'm here to tell you about my latest project about the greatest living fantasy coffin maker in the whole world, Pa Joan. We are trying to raise £20,000 so that we can travel back to Ghana and find the ending to our film, taking this film one step closer to our cinema audience. Thanks a lot for listening.